Guys, he's cut his teeth for many years in B2B SaaS. He used Zora back at his last company and said, there's got to be a better way to build enterprise customers and track things like net retention, et cetera. He's now selling Unium directly to CFO. Start off cold calling back in 2017. Got his first customer. Now the team is 60 full-time, 20 engineers, six quota carrying sales reps, 200 paying customers, and an average ACV of around 30K. They're moving up market past 6 million bucks of ARR and done it pretty capitally efficient with just 10 million bucks raised as they look to continue to scale. Hey, folks. Folks, if we haven't met yet, my name is Nathan Latka. I launched and sold my first software company back in 2015 and went on to write a book about it, which you guys made a Wall Street Journal bestseller, purchasing over 30,000 copies. Thank you so much for that. After the book, I launched this show and went on to create founderpath.com. I raised a large fund to do non-dilutive deals with B2B software founders. So far, we've invested in over 400 software founders, totaling $150 million. Here in 2024, we're doing three to four new deals per week. So if you're looking for capital and don't want to give up equity, go sign up at founderpath.com for free to get your offer. All right, let's jump into the interview. Hey folks, my guest today is Nicholas Lilia. He's building the subscription hub for B2B software companies at unium.com, launched seven years ago back in 2017. Now growing, we're going to learn about it today. Nicholas, you ready to take us to the top? Sure. Happy to be All here. Right. So for folks that haven't heard of you, just give us a quick overview. What's the company do? How do you make money? So we serve uh, software and SaaS companies, preferably in B2B. And what we do is that we provide a SaaS for them to manage their subscriptions and their contracts with their end customers so that they can, you know, do the quoting, they can do the subscription management, they can do the billing, they can get all the finances in place and, you know, do the metrics and get that from a, not from a spreadsheet, but actually from mm-hmm. transactions like AR, NRR, you no know, retention rates, etc. This real-time data is obviously really important. I think my audience will be wondering, okay, I use like Ramp or Brex and they build some of this inside of their tools. Your pure play, I think, doing expense management like this, how would you compare and contrast yourself to some of these card providers? So we're not doing expense management. We are on the customer invoicing side. So it's more on the, you know, selling and uh, getting paid for the software so or the things so that's more on the side we're in but definitely we are pure you know we, that's the only thing we do we typically sit between like a salesforce and a hubspot and a backend like a netsuite or a quickbooks and perhaps your own service and how to get that orchestrated and done in a good way all the way from you know quoting dealing with the subscription over its lifetime maybe you're doing upsells you're doing indices you're doing things with that maybe it's a customer success team maybe you do self-service how to get that all in one place have one source of truth and then make sure everything is correct when it turns to like revenue recognition when you have your you know your ars to report to the board etc so that's how we typically fit in i misunderstood you so thanks for the clarification you're you're way more like a charge uh, charge b or stripe yeah definitely so how would you, okay, so same question, right? How would you compare yourselves against against them? Or do people use you both together? Charge B plus Unium, Stripe plus no, Unium? No, I think it's I think it's um, fairly straightforward, I would say. So, so we are focused only on B2B, so we don't do any B2C. So you definitely have some place, you know, doing a bit of B2C and also like B2 small B, where it's very, very standardized. Maybe it's an online $99 a month, very standardized. Um, they are doing it great, you know, go with that. Um, we're more into like wh- when companies are doing bigger deals, maybe higher average revenue per deal, uh, maybe more light items, perhaps a bit more, I would say more uh, custom, it could be mm-hmm. as well, or a mix of like an online channel and enterprise deals. And that's typically where we come in. So, so I, I would see. say it's quite a depending on what kind of business you're having. What makes sense. So going back to the founder story here, obviously a lot of people, at least I think the best founders, they build for their own pain they had. Before Unium, where were you? How did you discover that this was a problem you wanted to build for? Yeah. So uh, I've been in the software or SaaS industry for some 20 years now. So I started my career at Medius. So they were actually doing supplier invoice management and a bit of expense management as well. and, and sort of did the whole journey from selling software, you know, installations and all that stuff and doing the transformation into the cloud and subscription models. Um, and pretty much 
did everything around that. Uh, and one of the last things we did actually was to, you know, get one of these your place systems uh, ready for that and in you know introduce it to the organization etc and, and i just figured so i've been thinking about i i, I wanted to start my own company at some point uh, but i need an just to be idea. clear you I built like, you built this from scratch inside of medias and said i need to build this for everybody no 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 no, no 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 so no quite the opposite we we uh we went with another solution and i thought like okay if this is the best the market has to offer uh Maybe we can do something better. So that's so now, super, Nicholas. Super I want to know short. which one. Who that's did you super use? Short. Uh, uh, we used uh, Zora back in time. I think they ah. are still named the category leader. Um, they're you know, getting killed in the public knows? markets, though. I mean, they're very, they're yeah. down a lot. Yeah, but I mean, have um, they tried to acquire that's you? That's where we're at. Then I figure like we can do something better, and maybe we can do it. You know, with a bit more local approach. Maybe we can do it for companies that are not so. I felt like I was, you know, my background was that I'd seen, you know, that it's not always perfect. Mm -hmm. That makes it sense. It always looks Talk, perfect, but in the reality, yeah. it's not. Once Talk to me a little market. bit more about how you're going to market. Pricing is a key piece of go to market, right? So how do you package this? What's the average customer paying you per month to use Unium? So typically, uh, I would say like an average price point is around $30,000 a year, uh, yep. a year that is, right? So. Um, so that's some average, but but you know quite quite a big spread from from small companies to big companies as well. Uh, we try to align it with value, and then you know we try to find some sort of proxy that you also can measure, right? So we typically find you know number of legal entities and some sort of AR tier being the best proxy so far. So that's how we do it. So if you have 10 companies in 10 <laughs> countries and you're making, you know, $100 million, the value will be something different from, you know, one company in one country and $1 million, right? So, so we try yep. to proxy that as much as possible. Yeah. A good way to measure the value of your utility-based pricing metrics, in your case, ARR level plus number of legal entities, is to look at net, uh, net revenue retention right over time. So when you look at those value metrics, are you able to drive 120, 130% net revenue retention? Uh, nope, not yet. But we're definitely, you know, aiming to do that. Uh, we, we are growing. Um, but I also think during our course of the seven years, I think we, we have sort of found our path as well. Um, and and we, I think we're moving a bit more upstream as well and to bigger and bigger accounts. So a bit of a shift there. Uh, but we're not seeing the 120, 130 yet. Um, mm -hmm. Are you over Are you over 100%? Um, but, but, uh, yes, but I okay. I think also like we're in our size, I I know there's a lot of talk about like net retention, and I totally agree that it's of course important to have that because it's you know a value. What do the customers say? What do they really really think when it comes to the wallet, right? But I think also when you are you know when you're not super super big, I think like new customer growth is equally if not more important as well i if you do the math i definitely see you know a ramping effect if you mm -hmm. accumulate over years uh, but also I, I think like new customer growth is equally important in the early days so nicholas tell me that I story how, how did you, how did you how did you get your first customer um so if we exclude sort of the you know a few friends and families in the in the in the beginning uh, two or three um the first one was actually me on the phone calling uh you know 20 companies uh, back in my hometown um <laughs> where was your hometown and, and all what, the cold what, stock what job uh, and so what job was, title you know, were you targeting this, it was doing this so so we've been sort of you know t creating some sort of prototype in this space for like five months and then I started calling and, you know, trying to get some meetings and, you know, very, very um, not fancy. Well, you, Nicholas, what, what, give us some sense of what job title were you targeting back in the early days? Head of CFO. revenue, CRO? Uh, CFO. CFO. Uh, our thesis was that, you know, um, you can sort of get by with a lot of things, but in the end, it all falls down into the lap of the CFO and they have to figure out the solution. But if you're in sales, you can do something and then you can just push it downstream. But in mm -hmm. the end, someone will have to say, okay, these are the correct figures. 
and they are by the book and they're all good. And, and that's typically where the problem sort of ended up. So that's where we started. So we took it from a very much of a, you know, financial function perspective when we started up. And what was your ACV back then on average, back in 2017? Uh, uh, I, uh, I think it was okay, to be honest. I, 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 but, but maybe towards like 18 or 20, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was actually, you know, quite good in the beginning, and then I think we had a bit of a slump when we when we sort of expanded the organization and and we took a bit more, more of a broader approach, and then we've been, you know, kicking off here. What do you mean broader approach? How many folks are full time today? Would you say at the company? So we're currently close to sixty. Six zero. How many engineers? Yeah, uh, around twenty. Wow, so heavy. A third. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're still, we're not done, right? I mean, we, <laughs> we're sort of in the first stint of what mm -hmm. we want to achieve. Um, and is this, and is this price it's... point large enough where you can afford to put sort of sales reps on the sale? And if so, how many quota carrying reps do you have? Uh, so at the moment, I think we are six, uh, quota carrying reps. Uh, yes, we can. And I, and I think. We're definitely moving sort of a, a bit upwards. Um, but I, I, I also do think that for most companies, it is not only an IT project, it's not only a software, it's also a change project. Um, and, and I think at least for a while, I think we will be better off with uh, some human touch and some one-to-one -one interaction, both in the sales process as well as onboarding. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of folks listening to this, especially SaaS and Nordics, they might be wondering, how do I hire my first two reps? What quota do I give them? How much time should I give them to ramp up to that quota? How did you make those decisions for your first one or two sales hires? Um, I, uh, I think we, I think, I think we didn't really put a, a, a quota and treat them as a sales rep. It was more like, "Hey, now we're going to do this together." So, so I, I think that's a bit of a different approach, maybe. And and you know, okay, let's lean in, let's do this together, and let, you know, uh, find out how to do it. Um, but I think we've we've always, when we've been talking about quota, we've been talking about you know the five times or the four to six times ARR is what it should be. But I think it's also overly optimistic thinking that you will have that on day one when you don't have a brand, you don't have a solution, you don't have the customer reference, you, you don't have it, right? So I think you have to be a bit careful with not oversetting that. I think you have to sort of grow into that uh, quota as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So what do you, Nicholas, what do you set quotas yeah. today for your AEs? Uh, so today it's uh, five times AR. <laughs> Five times ARR or five times their their salary. Oh, sorry. Five You're times OTE. <laughs> but but the yeah. OTE should be five. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. No, no. You're, 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 I think I I, I got what you're saying. Yeah, five times. Say say that one more time. <laughs> uh, the ARR they bring in should be five times the OTE. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and is, it full, is it is it fair to say that an OTE at Unium is going to be, or an o, OT is going to be somewhere between called 100 and 200K? So you're expecting something like a 600, 800K quota? Yeah, I, I, I think like salary levels are quite different depending on whether you're in different countries in Europe and in the US. But yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, that, that's why I asked. That's why I want to know yeah, what yours yeah. was. I know it's different than what I hear yeah, in the yeah, US. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I think like th this is not pure. This is not fully scientific. But I, I, if if I would guess something, I would like take uh, um, salaries being half of the US. Mm -hmm. yeah. in northern yeah. europe and then somewhere maybe a bit higher in some parts of europe but you know um yeah so you start off cold calling seven eight nine ten years ago right uh, not that long ago seven, seven eight uh, years ago yeah, 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 uh, you yeah, then yeah, build yeah. the team up to 60 people you've mm -hmm. got six quota carrying reps you're onboarding sales reps now with all these yeah. things you've learned how many customers are you now serving so we crossed 200 um oh wow so that's good so now it feels like you know a decent 
size. So very, very happy about that. Um, and it's going faster and faster. So I'm really, really happy about that as well. Yeah. What growth rate are you targeting this year? Uh, so rolling 12 months, we're looking at some... 60 percent it's been a bit a bit higher actually in the beginning of the year but i, I think yeah around 60 so you'd be, 60 you'd be happy and then targeting you're... cash flow positive by you know end of 2024 so uh that's sort of the balancing act that we're trying to to do well, we're obviously certain cer certainly rooting for you that'd be great if you could hit that could we also can, I mean, can we take the 200 paying customers times the 30,000 average acv you told me earlier to multiply those to get a revenue figure of around 6 million today would that be fair uh it would be fair uh it's on the lower side but yes maybe it's 30 yeah something but yeah 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 30 uh, percent too low uh no, the 30K per customer is probably 31 or 32. Ah. I know something, but when you multiply with 200, it still sort of becomes <laughs> something. So, so, so I would say around like six and a half million US dollars, something like that. Well, congratu um, congratulations on what you've built. Yeah. As we wrap up here, I think you've also done this fairly capitally efficiently. How much have you raised to date? Uh, around 10 million US dollars. So I think mm -hmm. we're trying to keep it as sort of a one-to-one -one, uh, on our own AR. Um, and I think it's looking fairly good to, to, to do that as well. Um, so is it fair to say you then probably won't it's test? Efficient, you know better. Yeah. Is it fair to say uh, then you probably won't go out to test the equity markets until you get your 6 million AR up to 10 million AR? So you're raised to AR as one-to-one? -one? Uh, yeah, may maybe. Uh, at least I think going above like eight or something. Um, yes, we'll see. I mean, uh, I think it's heavily dependent on the on the markets as well. I think we have lots of more things we want to do, but we want to do it with you know good timing. Yep. Uh, yep. Let's see when that is. Uh, oh. Great. Well, hey, let's wrap up here, Nicholas, with a famous five. Number one, <laughs> what's the software tool that you pay the most for? I pay the most for uh, over the years. Uh, it uh, was Sora. <laughs> Sora, fair enough. Number two, who's the last CEO you had coffee with? Uh, it was uh, uh, a guy on Friday uh, in the Philadelphia area called Gene Goddick. Yeah. Which is company or her company? Uh, so he's with G squared. He's an, uh, he does outsourced finance, uh, and CFO, fractional CFO. Yeah. Ah, great. great. Very local. Okay. That's good. Number three, is there a, uh, favorite book, a software book or business book that you have? Uh, I know I really enjoy the book first break all the rules. Uh, I don't remember the author now, but I, I both like the title and I, did like a lot of the content as well um and that it has, doesn't have to be just one way maybe yeah great and nicholas how many hours of sleep are you getting every night uh i'm actually good at that eight i would say <laughs> that's that's healthy Plus what's more your, kids. Yeah. how many see, i was gonna say what's your situation married single kids married two kids 10 and 12 uh they are starting to like to you know sleep in in the morning uh, but in all honesty, I think it's also uh, a very good thing for me. I feel like I'm doing better things. That's so great. I recommend. And how, how old are you, Nicholas? How old I am? You. Uh, 45. Last oh, question. Yeah, 45. <laughs> 45. Yeah. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, that people around you don't care so much about what you do. They are very much obsessed with what they are doing. They keep on doing what you do. Yeah. 
Guys, he's cut his teeth for many years in B2B SaaS. He used Zora back at his last company and said, there's got to be a better way to bill enterprise customers and track things like net retention, et cetera. He's now selling Unium directly to CFO. Started off cold calling back in 2017. Got his first customer. Now the team is 60 full-time, 20 engineers, six quota carrying sales reps, 200 paying customers, and an average ACV of around 30K. They're moving up market past 6 million bucks of ARR and done it pretty capitally efficient with just 10 million bucks raised as they look to continue to scale. Nicholas, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you so much. What a summer.